Hey everyone, welcome to 996 The Howl for the Uninitiated. This is an unedited YouTube vlog discussing everything Arizona Coyotes. And if you miss Coyotes hockey, if you crave Coyotes hockey, you gotta be watching this Montreal Canadiens and Toronto Maple Leafs series. I mean, the Canadiens play exactly like the Coyotes, uh, which is not a compliment. If you couldn't catch my sarcasm, just heavily reliant on your goaltending, play too much defense, and then when they finally get the puck, they're too tired and have to dump it for a line change, very inept offense, lacking offensive punch, a lot of perimeter shots, a lot of shots going right to the goalie's chest. So if you're missing that sort of hockey, be sure to watch the Montreal Canadiens. But to get to it, a serious note, uh, it's always difficult making videos like these and even being a fan when your team's going out to get a coach or a general manager because there's so many things behind the scenes, so many intangible qualities that go into a hire like this and a major one like a coach and a GM where we kind of just have to sit at the sidelines and wait until it actually happens. You can speculate all you want, but when it comes down to it, these hires are made based off in-person interviews. And if, you know, the interviewee can really uh, impress the interviewer to a point where they would actually hire them. But, you know, I gotta make a video. Not too much news on the coaching front for the Coyotes except for yesterday where it was reported that Todd Nelson is actually interviewing for the Coyotes coaching jobs. So that's the only bit of information we have. Here I have some six candidates, which I feel like the Coyotes should probably go after. And um, honestly, besides this, these six um, candidates, not sure where else you go from here, unless you go for like a promotion with Jay Verity um, who was promoted to assistant coach last season. He coached the Tucson Roadrunners to their, to their second division title in 2019-2020. And then because the AHL season was a bit weird, he got promoted to the assistant coaching job for the Coyotes for this past season. Okay, we're going to jump into it. The big name out there that most Coyotes fans are hoping to get, um, besides Gerard Gallant, uh, it seems to be Mike Van Ryan. He coached the Tucson Roadrunners in 2017-2018 to their uh, first divisional title. They're, they finished first in, in the Pacific. They finished 42-20-5. and five. And then shortly after that, he was hired by the St. Louis Blues, where Doug Ar uh, Bill Armstrong sorry, was the assistant GM at the time. And there, the St. Louis Blues won the Cup in 2019. So he was part of that cup winning group. You know, when you're looking at, you know, hiring an assistant coach, you want them to have success. And that's exactly what happened with Rick Tockett. Rick Tockett was the assistant coach for Pittsburgh, winning those two cups. That was a big point on his resume. And all our us fans were so happy that they brought in a guy who actually was involved in winning Stanley Cups. But obviously it goes to show you know, it's not all about just winning Stanley Cups as an assistant coach. There's so much other things going on. So, I mean, that's a bright spot of Mike Van Ryan's resume. He also has history with the Tucson Roadrunners. He coached guys like Connor Garland, Michael Bunting. I think he coached maybe Lane Peterson and obviously Aiden Hill. So he's got some familiarity with the organization. So that would be a pretty good pickup for the Coyotes. Uh, Nate Lehman, I saw his name floating around. Apparently, he's one of the top NCAA candidates to be hired for an NHL coaching job. Not too many NCAA coaches get hired as NHL coaches. There's been a little bit of a bump recently, but I think the total number is only five in the history of the NHL. Um, some familiar names would be David Quinn, who just got fired from the New York Rangers. Uh, Jim Montgomery, who was fired from the Dallas Stars in 2019 2020, we'll get to him later. And Dave Hackstall, who was fired from Philadelphia a couple of years ago. So, you know, the trend of hiring a college head coach is starting to ramp up a bit. Uh, he won the NCAA championship with the Providence Friars in 2014 2015. 
pretty long time ago. And this is the past three seasons. Um, they're all winning records. Pretty good 18-19 season. Um, not too bad 19-20. And then I think 2020-2021 was just a shortened season. They just kind of, you know, another shortened season due to, the, due to the pandemic. So you can't really go off those stats, to be honest. But he is a leading candidate out of college. So maybe we'll see the Coyotes going after him. And then, like I mentioned earlier, Todd Nelson, who won the Calder Cup in 2016-2017 with the Detroit Red Wings minor league affiliate, the Grand Rapids Griffins. He finished his AHL you know, season as a head coach, 42-25-9. Really good numbers. Since then, uh, Todd Nelson's been the assistant coach for the Dallas Stars, and he's in charge of the Dallas Stars power play and defense. And last season, the Dallas Stars power play was fifth in the league, and their goals against per game was seventh in the league. So really good. Um, he did interview for the Coyotes job last time when they were looking for a coach, and where the Coyotes obviously went with Rick Tockett. But apparently, Nelson interviewed really well with John Shaka, and the organization was actually leaning towards hiring Todd Nelson, but they ended up going with Rick Tockett. And I got a paragraph to read out to you guys um, during one of those interviews I thought was very interesting. So I'll read it here. It has to do with his system and his style of coaching. So Todd Nelson says, I think in this day and age, if you wait for something bad to happen, it's going to happen. Why not try to dictate the play? That goes along with my system work. That goes along with my philosophy. I hate the term, let's weather the storm. I hate that because you're in a defensive mode versus we fight fire with fire and we're going to jam it down their throat. Over the course of the game or playoff series, you have to adjust tactics. I get that. Those are the adjustments you have to make. I want to force the other team to beat us. If I get beat, I don't want it to do it in a defensive mode. I want to go after them. If they beat us, I tip my hat to the opposition team. So that sounds completely different from Rick Tockett's philosophy, which we're so familiar with. Uh, Rick Tockett was a very defensive-minded coach, relied heavily on goaltending, and didn't really play with that speed and up-tempo style that he came in hoping to play. Um, it seemed like the Cowboys just reverted to a more of a defensive system, just like Dave Tippett did prior to Rick Tockett. So it seems like Todd Nelson... He's a very up-tempo guy. He's a player's coach. He loves talking to his players on a consistent basis, just like Rick Tockett did. And also, Todd Nelson, not to say that this is going to be the future of the Coyotes, but in his time in the American Hockey League, he did deploy a power play of five forwards and actually was like the top power play in the American Hockey League for that season. So I'm not saying he's going to come into the Coyotes and play five forwards on the power play. I'm just saying that He's able to think outside the box if, you know, he has five great forwards that perform well besides getting some defensemen on the power play, he'll go out and do that. He's a very, you know, unconventional guy. Maybe he's just what the Coyotes need. And his only NHL head coaching experience was with the Edmonton Oilers a really long time ago. And they did play good under Todd Nelson, but that was when the Oilers were tanking and their overall record wasn't very flattering. So he's grown up since then. Uh, he's been with Dallas Stars, like I said, for the past three seasons, and Dallas Stars have been performing well. They did miss the playoffs this year, but uh, you know they had a bad start due to COVID and all that. So you know Nelson's another good candidate. Moving on, I think the coach, the leading coaching candidate that all the fans want is Gerard Gallant. I think I lean towards that group. I think I lean towards a coach with a lot of winning experience in the NHL Hockey League and the NHL. Uh, going with a cheaper option like these three, um, they have success on their resumes, but minor league or college success. Um, obviously, this is a cheaper option. Another Rick Tockett situation where are they going to come in and light it on fire and bring this team to the playoffs immediately like Dean Everson did with the Minnesota Wild? 
or are they going to have you know a, a learning period and a growing pain period like Rick Tockett had, where Rick Tockett didn't win in his first twelve games with the Coyotes. So I feel with Gallant, maybe Moose Bruce Boudreau, um, they would get off on a hot start and just ride that success into the playoffs if they get coaches like these who have tremendous success in the regular season and somewhat in the playoffs. Gallant more than Boudreau, obviously. Uh, Gerard Gallant uh, was a first coach ever for the Vegas Golden Knights. Incredible first season for Vegas, leading them to the Stanley Cup final where we all thought Vegas would be a laughing stock and they'd be at the bottom of the league and a punching bag, but he turned that team around. He got that team to buy in. And since then, Vegas has never looked back. They've always been amazing and always been a top elite team in the NHL. He was fired in 2019-2020 when he was 24-19-6, which is still pretty good. But I believe they were on a five-game, six-game losing skid. At that time, the Cowboys were first place in the Pacific, if you all remember that. And he hasn't coached since he got fired. Um, He's coaching Hockey Canada right now in the World Championships. They're off to a miserable start. I believe they're one win and three losses. They lost to Germany, Latvia, and the United States. Kemper's not having a great tournament. Um, That roster is really weak. Um, Michael Bunting made the team, so that should uh, be all the evidence you need to see what type of forward core they have on that Canadiens team. So Gallant, you know, uh, I think we all want him. He's going to be expensive. A lot of teams are looking at him. Seattle, New York, Columbus, uh, Buffalo. He's a hot ticket. And uh, maybe the guys go after him, maybe not. Bruce Brujo's up next, who is one of the best regular season coaches ever created in human history. Um, he's won eight division titles in his 12 head coaching NHL seasons. He finished first place in all his seasons with Washington and all his full seasons with the Anaheim Ducks. Uh, it was only with the Minnesota Wild where they didn't have that regular season success after his first year with them. This was, you know, the Minnesota Mild, very lacking in offensive talent, not going anywhere. Somehow, some way, by firing Bruce Boudreaux and bringing in their and promoting their assistant coach Dean Everson. They just turned into an elite team. They got great goaltending by Cam Talbot and a great rookie in Kill Kaprizov that re-energized the team and just had an incredible season this past season. So, Brujo, he's an analyst, I think, on the NHL Network. He's a bit old. He's been in the league for a really long time. So maybe I wouldn't really go after him, but he's there. He's a big name. He always wins in the regular season. He's had some trouble in the playoffs. Uh, he hasn't gone past the first round in his last four playoff appearances. And he's always memed as like a guy who performs in the regular season but can't get his team to win in the playoffs. And last but not least, we have Jim Montgomery, who won the NCAA championship in 2016-2017. He then was a hired for the Dallas Stars head coach. He went 43, 32, and 7, and then um, two seasons ago, 17, 11, and 3, but unfortunately he got fired due to behavioral problems and abuse, uh, I think substance abuse. But since he rehabbed, he's been hired by the St. Louis Blues, and he's been on the St. Louis Blues assistance coach team this past season. He actually was hired the day Bill Armstrong was hired for Arizona Coyotes. So I'm sure Bill Armstrong was in talks with Doug Armstrong about hiring Montgomery. So I'm sure he was in the interviews. I'm sure he's familiar with Jim Montgomery. So maybe that's another candidate. The guys go for a cheap assistant coach looking to break through again to the NHL head coaching job. Um, I was maybe going to put Mike Babcock, Mike Babcock on this board, but... You know, he just got hired for a Saskatchewan minor league head coaching job, and they still haven't played a game due to the pandemic. Their league has been shut down, so it seems weird. It doesn't seem like to me, it doesn't seem likely to me that Mike Babcock would sign a contract with a hometown minor league team and then without even playing a game will just jump back to the NHL. So I think he's done with the NHL. I think he wants to stay a low-profile 
go home back in Saskatchewan, um, try to be a hometown hero, I guess, over there. So I did put Mike Babcock on the board. Any other candidates, maybe Dave Quinn, who was recently fired from the New York Rangers. But um, I didn't like what he did with the Rangers. Actually, you know, the Rangers are in a weird spot. I think they're still a rebuilding team, but their organization doesn't think so. I thought he did pretty good for the team they had. I mean, they finished close to the playoffs, and uh, they got a lot of young talent there. So I don't know. Quinn might be a, a good candidate for the Coyotes. But it seems that the Coyotes organization is going to lean to a cheaper, inexperienced type coach like these three and Montgomery. I really doubt they'll go and hire Jared Gallant, even though a lot of people do want him. So this is it. Uh, If you have other candidates you think would be good for the Coyotes job, put them in the comments. We can discuss it. But uh, just wanted to get this video out there because you got to talk about the coaches and the leading candidates for the job one way or another. So that's it for me. Thank you for watching and thank you for your support.